Alrighty, g'day, Shot of Footy Cast, live from Backchat Studios. It's been a big weekend in footy, fair bit going on. One of the, I reckon one of the best seasons we've had in a long time, Skeeter, and it's great to be involved with it. Hello to you, Mark Reddings. Hello to you, Scoey, and uh, we've had a couple of big um, names drop out of races. You, Dean Cox you, has <laughs> dropped out of the Eagles coaching, and Joe Biden said, no, it's all over, <laughs> Rover, and uh, Kamala Harris is going to have a crack at uh, the Big Donald. Um, do you like? Do you feel okay about after after sort of denouncing you? You're running for the presidency. No, yeah, the I more am... I look at you, the more you like Joe Biden. Oh, I go seriously. That's, that's he's 81 years of age. I, you know, I've got my faculties. You know, he's been uh, he's been retired to pass you, but uh, no, it's fascinating. <laughs> I think it's fascinating watching a bloke like Trump just do what he does and. Uh, tell a few fibs along the way and uh, they, they lap it up. The Kool-Aid's been drunk. But uh, Coxie, on a footy sense, yes. we'll have to get to that soon. But uh, that's another development. So Don Pike and the, those trying to uh, find the next Eagles full-time coach, it's not an easy uh, task, I wouldn't have thought, with the, the, the field that's in place. Skeeter, uh, I forgot to do this for about three episodes in a row. We have a huge derby preview show at the Leadable Hotel. Do you? This Friday. Tickets are almost gone. Shelter footy casters, you got to get on backchatstudios.com.au and get your ticket. We've, we've um, partnered up with 6PR. Yes, I heard you doing that. Right, one of our many employers. <laughs> I've still got a text, but I've got to go get six different spreadsheets. <laughs> so we are doing Friday Night Lights live from the Leadable Hotel. Dave Mundy, games record holder. Will Schofield, games dropped holder at the West Coast Eagles. We'll be getting through a huge derby preview. Have you got something on Friday? Uh, I'll, I'll find Mark some. Reddings will be down there. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Mark no. Reddings will be down there. I was down at the uh, the garden, which is that close. That's part of the lead. Did you enjoy it? that? Yeah, just had, had a drink or two there Friday. And the lead, we've been there. And I've got to say, I was shocked when I walked into the last function we did there, which was on a Thursday night as part of Shelter. And the last derby preview show. Yeah, and it was massive. It was. I was staggered that people would want to listen to the poop-a-rama that we came up with. So Skater will be there. Uh, it'll be, we're going live from uh, 6 p.m., but uh, doors open at 5. Come down and grab a feed. Uh, it's full on Carlton Port Adelaide. I'll be watching that. Dan is back from Adelaide. He's been, uh, sorry, Adelaide, uh, America. He's, he's making a return. He's been away for three weeks. Really? He'll be down there taking on people in a handball game. You want to beat Dan Cons? I might even get Mark Reddings to have a go at the handball game. I Dan's that, been in the States. So he's, he's been we in the sure, States. Are we sure that he hasn't been uh, just infiltrating any political uh, <laughs> system out there? Just bringing we back some AR-15s the, or oh, anything just to try and keep things interesting? <laughs> the guy on the slope roof <laughs> Oh, very good. So everyone will be there. Hamish Brayshaw's coming down. Uh, and we've got some very special surprise guests as well. So <laughs> Sorry. You, you can go and get... I just, <laughs> I'm thinking of Donald Trump when he talks about illegal immigrants. And if you saw Dan with his moustache, <laughs> hey, here, <laughs> you get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Backchatstudios.com.au for a big night on Friday night. And we moved it to Friday so we could have a few more beers, to yeah. be honest. So uh, there's a couple of tickets left, but you're going to have to go and quickly grab those. Uh, going to be a huge, huge night. All right, let's get into all of the big stuff in footy. Do you want to talk about this West Coast coaching stuff first? Should we do that? Let's. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it... No surprise to me that Dean Cox, uh, when I say officially, I think... The Eagles will still be uh, knocking on his door again, I'd imagine, if they're really keen to, yes. to try and lure him because there's no question that the money they're going to offer him would be well in advance of what he's getting as a, an assistant coach at Sydney. But there's more to this than just that pay I side. I think of we it. spoke about it here that we, I feel like I said I don't think he's going to be the coach. I no, feel, I, 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 think, I think we spoke about it. He both had the same mail. Both had the same mail. And of course, Kerry's got the, I think, the Hungry Jacks franchise yep. set up. He's very happy. The kids also. I think people just they think oh well you know just move and your kids will follow etc. But you know when you when your kids are getting to a certain age where they're enjoying their classmates, you've got family and friends, more so friends for for Coxie obviously over on that side of the country. I, He's been there close to ten years. Scared his kids are eleven and eight. So the eight year old was never been a West Australian. Yeah, might have been born over there, and then the eleven year old wouldn't know anything about it. So exactly right. I think you're dictated more and more by your kids, as you would know, Skeeter, as you get a little bit older. So no, Dean Cox, rule that out. See you later. Who's on the table, and how does this go for the West Coast Eagles? Do they need a an experienced coach, or do they give it to an untried and untested? Craig McRae, Adam Kingsley type operator. Is it lambs to the slaughter for the next two or three years? If you are an, an, a, an assistant coach currently and get the job, like for instance at the moment, if you'd ask me about Jared Schofield, uh, this next five weeks, it's going to be hard to see them winning 
maybe one game, and that's that's being honest with you. Yep. That puts him essentially out of the running, I would suspect, as the full time coach. So maybe. was it a? I mean, he had to take the job. I mean, you were offered the job. You've got to take it in Jared's case, I'm guessing. Yeah. But by the same token, the list hasn't got any better while you're in charge in the next five weeks. Well, it didn't get any better overnight. No, so exactly. Adam Simpson had him on a Monday, and then the Tuesday they didn't get better. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, it was a real hard one for Jared. Uh, the, the two questions are: Do you go experience, whether that's Nathan Buckley who doesn't have a, have a role, or I think you brought up Nathan Ken Hinckley as a as a possibility. So, so I would say, question to you, Skeeter, is then is this coach that they're going to hire? The next no. premiership coach of the West Coast Eagles. I wouldn't have thought so. And look, history <laughs> no. history suggests no. Well, history suggests even like a recycled coach. I think since two thousand, there's only been one coach, a recycled coach, has gone on and won a flag, right. and that's Mick Malthouse hmm. of Chip Collingwood. Outside of right. that, it hasn't thus yielded the ultimate success. And Michael Voss is doing some good work at Carlton. There's a number of coaches that are. You know, Ross Lyon's gone back, but haven't been able to get the success. Most coaches get their premiership as a coach in their first five or six years, I think you'll find. Right. So on so that- this hire, they are hiring someone to develop the list or to take a bullet for five years. Yeah, well, you, yeah I think, yeah, e- either or. No, I think you're right. Um, so is that why – so I'm not I'm not all in on experience. No, nor am I. Adam Papalia on 6PR over the weekend was sort of pressing that – narrative a little bit which is definitely one of them and I think there's only two likely types it's Nathan Buckley who has coached before I wonder how West Coast Eagles fans would feel with Nathan Buckley the great Collingwood uh, midfielder coach 2018 if if he gets results they'll adopt him as a son I just I just think I think look I I sort of um have trouble placing him in the blue and yellow uh, just because you know him yeah. as a Collingwood guy, but certainly uh, stranger things have happened. <laughs> um, I just think I just think West Coast fans in particular would find it difficult for some reason. But anyway, Ken Hinckley, I think is is I don't think there's another name like um, you know James Hurd. Well, there's, is there's, floating around, is he? Or, no, Chris well, Scott's name has been mentioned. Chris Scott, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if you're talking coaches in the system... Well, he's a good coach. He's a very good coach. You're leaving Geelong. Pro- probably not. I mean, right. we're going pie in the sky stuff. I yeah. mean, someone even suggested on radio this morning that Coxie takes the job at Sydney and, and Horse comes to coach the Eagles. I don't so think I mean, that'll be happening. No, nor do I. I look, I, I think most likely, it's only a guess, I think they will go with an untried assistant coach, whether it's Ashley Hanson, Jamie Graham, someone in that stratosphere that is currently an assistant. That's that's my gut. And you know what? It can work. We've seen it with Craig McRae. Yeah. And we've seen it with Adam Kingsley. We've seen it Yeah, but they've walked into different situations. I do, yeah, that, that is that's a really good point. So if but, you're if you're one of those guys, Hanson, Graham, whoever, I've got one name to put on the agenda who I think would be brilliant. Go. Just hang on. Oh. But if you're one of those guys, um I I think you're sort of considering, well, you know, Am I just going there for three, four years? Lambs to the slaughter. To get fired and, and to not get a lot of results, hopefully develop the list for when someone else better is... Is is that is that how you look at it? Is that how every job's nah, looked at? No, no. I think the, the, if you're going to take the job, the upside is, look, we're coming off, what, three wins, two wins. The only way you think, the right. only way is a positive. If you can get somehow get seven or eight wins out of them next year, for instance. Yes, so that you're starting at a pretty good level from a coaching perspective in the sense of the upside. The downside is the list is going to take a fair while, you'd think, to rejuvenate, to get back to a really competitive level. So there's a bunch of guys that are um, sort of tested um, that I've uh, co- been coached under that I'm putting on the on the dartboard. Scott Burns, he's been interviewing and around for a long time now. Hawthorne, Collingwood, he's now at Adelaide. Uh, coached for a long time at West Coast. I know he's got head coaching aspirations, or at least did at some point in time. Good coach. I'd put him in there. Uh, I would also like to put David Teague back on the agenda. He was Carlton head coach, of course, uh, a few years back. Uh, he was an assistant coach at West Coast. Good coach. Uh, he's at Richmond now, I believe. The man that I would like to put right up in lights that no one is speaking about, like literally no one is speaking about, and you've heard me speak about my best coach I ever played under, mm-hmm. Sam, Sam Mitchell. Mitchell. So I'm not putting Sam Mitchell on, on the dartboard, but his right-hand man at Hawthorne right now is the best development coach I've played under. He 
alongside Sam Mitchell, had one of the biggest hands in what we did in 2018. It's a big build-up. Um, and his name is Adrian Hickmont, uh, former uh, Geelong Cat, former Carlton player. Um, he has an ability to develop players. He has incredible relationships with players and he spends a lot of time in that area. He is Sam Mitchell's right-hand man. Sam Mitchell brought him over from West Coast to be that guy. I think he's coaching a line at the moment, but he's done everything. Is he, he technically savvy? He, that's probably not his strength. Yeah. His strength is connection, relationship, and improving players. Mm. He took a group in 2018 of players. So basically his role throughout our premiership year, it was it was just known as Adrian Hitmont's group, right? Blokes that were in that over, over a couple of years. So he would take them for the year and he would just be their guy and he would be just pummeling them to get better. Dom Sheed was one of those guys. Liam Ryan was one of those guys. Elliot Yo was one of those guys. I was one of those guys. You go through the premiership team, there's about 10 of us that that were in that group. And it was almost like extracurricular activities, right? You had your line coach, you had your head coach, and then you had Hick. And Hick just focused on areas of your game to get you better, whether, whether it was mental, whether it was um, skill-based. He's an incredible developer of players. And, and if he wants a head coaching role, which at Again, well, in one point in time he did. I would have him at number one. That if someone asked me at West Coast, who do you think should be the coach? I would say Adrian Hitmont. That's your experience. I would suggest he's probably about a thousand to one. And that, why? Why well, is he any different to Ash Hanson or Jamie Graham? No, I'm saying I would suggest he'd be well back in the pack. Why? Because I think they will go for. Uh, I think they will. They'll, if they're going for a, an assistant coach, I think they will choose a. a I think Jamie Graham's ahead of him. Why? Because of his, um, and this is probably how old's how old's Hick now? Forties, forties, forty-five ish, fifty-two ish. No, no, at fifty-two's. I mean, you think of it. Um, Adam Simpson's still under fifty, and he was uh, coaching horse. Would only be, I think, in his early fifties. Why do you want a young coach? No, no, I'm just saying what young coach. But I just get the feeling that if you've been an assistant coach for a long time, as uh, Adrian has, yep. which is yep. fine. I just wonder, and you mentioned Scott Burns. See, I think Scott Burns would. I don't think he's in the mix. That's just my gut feeling. Why? Well, because if you're in there, if you haven't got a job after say 10, 15 years as an assistant coach, it's a bit like Brian Rule used to be always thought of as a as a potential senior right. coach. It, there's a bit of a cycle. Peter Sumich went through, you know, th that period where he was uh, in the mix, and then once. Uh, you know, once the media found someone else, or, or there was a there was another up and coming assistant coach, they attract attention. Your experience is probably one hundred percent right, but I would be I'd be giving you plaudits if he gets the job because it's a, it's a it's a left fielder. I if, think if the if this job which we've just spoken about is a it's a hiding to nothing um, for you, yeah. a better term, wouldn't you rather someone who's been there, seen it, done it all, great developer of people than a untried, less experienced, what has has true lifelong head coaching aspirations if it is a three to four stopgap to get this group to where it needs to be to then go and win a premiership. Would you would you not want someone like an Adrian Hitmont, Scott Burns that in your words, you know, has, has 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 had opportunities but hasn't had them. Wouldn't you want someone like that that's actually seen it all? Well, yeah, that's that's absolutely an argument. I don't. I'm not pouring cold water on. I just wonder whether you said a thousand to one. It's well, not think, great odds. well, okay. You know, I, I think it's unlikely. Okay. That's what I'll say. But you know what? You've you've experienced him as a coach in that area. So, but you're saying if he's not, I think it's still going to look for a coach that's quite. Uh, strategically savvy, I would have thought. Uh, you know, I mean, can, yeah, it's just it's such an all encompassing role now. The, the hit one thing would be more like a Fagan role at Brisbane, yeah, in my okay. opinion. So I don't think Fagan's good um, tactically, tactically, but he's got a lot of great assistants around him. Yeah, well, um, even speaking to Mark Stone, who was uh, involved in that space last year, about yeah, Fagan's is a real uh, relationship coach. That's what it? you need. It might not be Adrian Hitmont, but it's yes, I think it's I an it. Adrian Hitmont type instead yeah, of a Jamie it. Graham type because. I think Jamie Graham goes there and it's like, okay, three years, thanks for your time, Jamie, and we're doing something else. You, so, did you rate Jamie Graham? Or have yes, you had, had yeah, Jamie Graham? Yeah, and I'm not going to sit here and not rate anyone either. But no, no. Yeah, yeah. And, but he would have developed a lot since I've seen him as a coach. I last saw him as a coach in 2020, so it's four years ago. Same as Justin Longmuir. Right, when he got appointed at Fremantle, I hadn't seen him for nine or oh, eight years, time at Collingwood and stuff. So there we're you go. Yeah, we're no closer. 
tonight telling you who the coach is. I know. Bloody hell. And if age is a barrier, Skeeter, I'll tell you what. Uh, Will Schofield. Uh, no, you know what? Have we got anything else we want to chat about off the top here? Um, Will Schofield. Mark Reddings. Shout out footy cast. <laughs> Right. Yeah, we did actually have something. Zach Butters oh, yeah. has now been hit with $36,250 worth of fines after two more fines last night. What what did he get fined for? Can you have a look at that, John? He has now paid more dollars in financial sanctions than any player in VFL, AFL history. Rough, Toby Green. Toby rough Green. conduct on Richmond's James Chazice, $5,000, and careless umpire contact, $1,875. <laughs> Mate, he is paying to play at the moment. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know he's, he's on pretty good coin, but yeah. He's, to- Toby Green's had $35,600. So but he's also had about 20 weeks of suspensions on the top of that. So, uh, Zach Butters, what is going on there? Uh, it's, that's that's pretty uh, – it just shouldn't be like a driving – uh, when you're driving, you get enough fines, eventually you get suspended. What, what is going on there? Correct. Uh, the thing I did want to speak about, Skeeter, was oh, yeah. the fan survey. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so over the weekend, Skeeter, uh, they've released the official AFL fan survey and some um, interesting results and talkable results came back. Uh, people's number one issue in the game at the moment is umpiring. No surprise. Yes. Uh, so, I don't know, a percentage of people are worried about that. Alongside that is the changes to rules and tinkering with the game, which continues. Did you see some of Laura Kane's media work over the weekend? She was on the front foot, I, I heard, felt. I heard you say, uh, I think it was you, but Somewhere. I, I forget, no, no, no I forget doubt. that she was bordering on aggressive. Was that I you thought, saying that? Yeah, she was on the front foot. So if you think about uh, batting terms in, in cricket, um, she didn't come out as the night watchman just hoping to get through to the day. She was she was front footing. She was saying, we are not apologetic about trying to protect the safety of our players. We won't apologise for doing that. Um, that that wasn't a that wasn't an offensive move. She she was made available to all the Melbourne radio stations, and she was on the front foot absolutely. And she went head to head with a few people, which I I, I thought was interesting oh, and good. But. You know, and, and some of the stuff now coming out about her being a, a woman and so that just. Yeah, you know, for me that that's crap. That 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 line of, of I haven't of considered that once, to be honest. No, well, nor should should you. But there, you know, if she genuinely believes, I I think if that's the path, I, I just think in brief, we'd all like. If put it this way, the fans can be confused, media can be confused, because guess what? We don't, you know, the, the players are the ones that are confused, and that's the most important element of this. And they, they if they need some clarity then that's perhaps where we should go with that. The other one, of course, there's some talk about too much gambling and advertising. Yep, on, so on 62% of people believe AFL should not receive revenue from gambling. That won't happen, I can tell you no. that right now. Well, it's legal, absolutely not. But uh, there are changes coming through the federal government, which is going to make life tougher for betting agencies. I can tell you during and, and, and as part of sports coverage, uh, they, you know, fans want the 12.30 Perth time AFL Saturday afternoon grand final to stay in place. And, and the right. drug testing is quite significant or the drug three strikes policy is very much at the front of mind of uh, some fans as well still Uh, asked if the afl needed to stiffen its illicit drugs policy and i quote that is verbatim it's an interesting word to use 75 percent of respondents supported tougher measures and 66 percent of more than the four thousand fans surveyed believe the afl should get rid of the three strikes policy which focuses on rehabilitation and education rather than punishment for those caught on illegal drugs. What well, what do you think if you if you're the, voting on that? Uh, the easy answer to that, and when you were sitting on the outside, is to say absolutely, uh, get tougher. You know, one strike, you're done. I don't think it's that simple. I know the AFL Players Association will will talk to that, and you will, as a player, as an ex-player, have greater knowledge of the inside workings of of the policy. But uh, does it surprise you that fans want it to be a, a tougher? You know, one strike, it's exposed, or it's certainly more clar- more, more transparency on, particularly maybe so for club um, presidents or chief executives outside of the club doctor to know. Yep. I mean, that's fine as Mark Redding's Siri Apple just watch. chimes in. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't know what's going on over <laughs> no, there. No idea. What do you think, Siri? Uh, look... I am a little... Well, I'm not surprised. No, I'm not surprised. But I, the reason I'm not surprised is I don't think there's a, a great deal of empathy or understanding of anyone involved there. It's it's a, how dare you do anything wrong? You live in a privileged position. 
why would you be making um, poor decisions? I can tell you why. It's a it's a it's a slight it, issue. It's a group yeah. of young men that are risk takers by nature, and that's why it happens. Like it's not it's not fucking rocket science why that goes on. Now, how you actually uh, punish those? Um, I, I'd be I'd be okay with um, uh, more stringent and stiffer terms. The three, the three strike policy. Whether you have it, the three strike policy or another policy, if you um, bring in something that the AFL players and AFL league um, volunteers to, this isn't a SADA mm. WADA issue. This is AFL trying to make the game, I guess, um, I don't know, better. If you bring in a, uh, you do drugs, you're out. I, I, I reckon you put that back to the fans. They're not going to like that either. So there's got to be some sort of. Safety net in place. There's not really many places in any workplaces where that's the case. And if there is, and if it is, mining uh, yeah, comes to, think, to yeah. mind, that they aren't put on the back page of the paper for the next three weeks, are they? Or life ruined. Um, they just get sacked and they go get another job somewhere else. That's that's why it's different. And, and you might disagree, that's fine. But the reason is the public scrutiny, one, that's why it needs to be, that why, why it needs to be a policy that... Um, does educate and has some has some flexibility in what's going on because the consequences for AFL players are different to anyone else. The public nature of this, and, and it is, you can't argue with it. I don't think you can argue with that. That's why it needs to be different. And so am I surprised that people want it stricter? No. Uh, do I think there's a lack of empathy? Yes, but that's okay. Yeah. And look, I think you summed it up pretty well. Young men will make mistakes. Uh, older men will make mistakes. Uh, men in general will make mistakes. And on that basis... <laughs> I think uh, I think it's worth revisiting just to make sure that all parties and, and clubs are also comfortable with where it sits in terms of helping a young Will Schofield who makes a mistake and, and they aren't across the intricacies of, of your drug-taking habits, if you have them or if it's a one-off. I think there needs to be, obviously, a, a really close group of people that know and I understand the confidentiality, but certainly I think there should be a, a point where the, the CEO or someone really close to the, the player at the club outside of the doctor can, mm. can try and help navigate that. Yeah, that's probably a good call, Skeeter. So maybe that's the uh, change that will be made. Um, but you've got to understand, though, and it, fair enough. It's probably fair enough. The CEO is the one paying the bills, right? So that's that's why they don't find out um, to start with, but maybe that's maybe that's wrong in the first place. Will Scoville, Mark Redding, Shuttle Footy Cast. All right, Skeeter, let's get into the games. Uh, we want to start the good or the bad. Uh, we'll go with the good okay. yesterday. Brilliant. Um, Fremantle smacked Melbourne. Absolutely walked all over them. Uh, got to take my kids to the footy for the first time in a little... Oh, I've never taken both of them by myself, ever. So that sort of says your and my footy schedule <laughs> over the last six years. So I had a great time. Sat uh, all around the ground. I um, uh, just uh, flashed my media pass, might be to get through. And then... Um, uh, just jump from seat to seat, uh, which was good fun. Bit the like kid, your kids, probably. The kids, <laughs> like, the kids loved it, mate. We had um, we had great fun, and I watched a fair bit of this one from the bleachers, which was good. I got to see a bit of a uh, bird's eye view of it all. Yeah, just the dominance of Fremantle was quite outstanding. Forty-seven to sixteen clearances. That's the second second biggest differential in the history of the game. Probably. Probably. I mean, it doesn't help you don't have a ruckman. No, and, and, and the other side. Well, I was too. I was watching pre-game <laughs> and seeing Harrison Petty. Uh, in the ruck, uh, doing some some prelim stuff, and I thought, gee whiz, oh, I know Maxi Gorn's on the sidelines, and uh, they didn't think is it Fullerton? It was yeah. not even a, a really recognised ruckman, but he he's still working on his craft. According Simon, to Simon Goodwin, yeah, he's not getting hit outs in the VFL. He said so. exactly. So on that basis, and Van Royen, I think, is a really good talent, but he's not a not a ruckman, but he, he pinch hits in that area. And then you put Darcy and Jackson. <laughs> Good luck. So they, they were getting sliced and diced. Uh, Sarong and Brayshaw, 77 disposals between them, just outstanding. Inside 50s was a really lopsided um, situation at one point. Melbourne sort of got some uh, some more territory later in the game. But this this match was, I reckon it was done pretty early. Yeah, so do I. Josh Tracy was outstanding. Yep. And, and against a really, I think, two of the best key defenders in the business in Lever and May, and, and he, he won some one-on-one -on -one contests. But it does show, you, as a good back line, you need a good midfield. Well, can I just pressure. quickly ask you this, and you'll be able to explain it uh, in layman's terms. So many times yesterday, the Dockers were able to get the ball at the back yeah. to a an unguarded Jai Amos or a Michael Walters or, or whoever the case may be. Is that a breakdown in the, in the Melbourne midfield, or is it defensively uh, an issue that Melbourne 
fail to deal with? Uh, it's a mel- it's a midfield issue that then re- results in a backline issue. So um, when midfielders um, get ball watching and they don't empty out and they don't we used to call it scan so they don't look behind them um freo midfielders are, are bolting out of stoppage or bolting out of t- from turnover once the mids don't react then the backs because they're in front of the footy they feel the need it's to suck up yeah they need to press those loose you can't just have loose players running out and then if freo or anyone else are good enough backs have pressed they can get through that and then there's no one there yeah. so that, that's sort of how you know tactically it works but really um of course, it was a game for I had to win, but but um, their their mix has been probably right for six weeks now. Freo, um, they are in the top four. Yes, um, they are they a top four side? I think so. I think they are. Even that loss to Hawthorne, I think Hawthorne's probably yeah. the informed side of of the competition as we speak, um, alongside Brisbane. So no, I think Fremantle can take a fair bit out of that. They've got. Uh, the Derby to come, I think they've got a, a couple of tricky games, but I, I think all things being equal, and I know they, they can go back and look at matches they, they should have won, including against Carlton and Port Adelaide earlier in the season, the Derby. But by and large, uh, the only really poor performance you know, outside the Derby was that game against the Bulldogs that I, that I thought yes. they, they were really poor. So, How on earth did Fremantle lose the Derby? I know. Yeah. How, how have they done that? You know what I think it was? It was coming off the back of two heartbreaking That's losses right. in Adelaide. That's it right. It felt a bit like they got back here and, oh, well, now we've got a, a game we just turn up and win. I, that, that's your total mindset one, I thought. So, yeah, that's a, that's a long way in the rearview mirror. What we're seeing now is a, a pretty um, competent side. They lose Alex Pierce, of course, for how long, we don't know. And I'm not so sure... So re-injured that, has he? Well, he has certainly injured the arm. I don't know if it's another fracture, whether... But it seemed quite an innocuous incident, and but he knew straight away. So I suspect he's felt either a little pop or something's right. um, gone there. So he's gone off for scans. And Gee, that's not good at the, all. The question will be, the question will be, and, you know, it's an obvious one, should he have played this week? Because, you know, it's a... It's a fractured arm, and either way, they've got cover because Josh Draper was told by Justin Lomuir, young man, go back, just have yourself, get yourself ready because yeah. something will come up at some stage possibly, and sure enough, he'll be playing in the derby, uh, barring uh, a miracle from Pierce or uh, they head in another direction. Alex Pierce does give them that anchor though, right? And, and I've noticed what Luke Ryan actually played the deepest back all day, which which he does do at times, but... You know, they have to go back to last week where they lose against Hawthorne because they didn't have that, just that big, bulky key position player. Now, Brennan Cox is two games in at AFL level. He'll continue to get better, but he's almost an interceptor. So mm. I, I think Luke Ryan, between Luke Ryan, Draper uh, and Cox, they're going to have to find a way to get it done because they may not have Alex Pierce for, I don't know, the rest of the year. If he's done it again, mate, they could not have him for the rest of the year. Yeah, I, just I, big, big I, news. I think they'll... I, well, I, think that even if he's a, another fracture, I think they'll get him back at some stage this season. But you're right, for the next four or five weeks, I think Josh Draper better be polishing his boots because he's going to be required. Just I know just touching on Josh Tracy before, oh, oh, there's 18 teams, so it's hard to, to put it down to one player. I think he's close to the most improved player in the competition. He, he's, yeah. he's certainly, I mean, certainly from a forwards perspective, he's... You know, he's clunking marks, he's a presence, He's and he's a baby. So there's, there's if you're a Docker supporter, you've got him, Amos. He's probably plateaued a bit this year in, in some areas of his game, but um, you don't think so? No, sorry, I was just... Oh, uh, yeah. I was no, just, just saying, yeah. I th- it feels like he, his goal kicking is just, yeah, he's, you know, he's getting manhandled, according to Josh Trace and others. They think he's being somewhat um, physically targeted, but yeah. yeah. He, he's probably always going to be that guy until he fills out a bit, because Jai Amos is... You know, he'll be it too. Yeah, exactly. So, so what they're doing in front of the footy with Josh Tracy and Jai Amos, two children, right? When they when they get a bit older, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a backman in that area because you know what, you sort them out. Luke Jackson's going to come and take a hanger on your over heads. Yeah, that's a, that's a forward line. That's why Logan McDonald's gone and signed at Sydney. He was yeah. never, he would never go and he would, ne- he would never get a gap. Honestly, no. No, I don't well, think Logan McDonald, if he was to get a mid-season trade this week. Would you have Logan McDonald in, any, in front of any of those three? No, probably not. But you're not going to play all four of them. No, twelve months ago, eighteen months ago, you think, well, well, maybe you know we need him. As Josh a doc- Tracy, I've been singing his buddy. I've been tooting his trumpet for a long time, Skeeter, as you know. Uh, four goals, by the way, to Sonny Walters. But I still think that 
I think the small forward is the is the area looking forward for them. That they they'd be nice to obviously the only succession role for him, and and who takes that role remains to be seen. But no, fifty points. You can't ask for more than that. Importantly, they get their percentage up to one sixteen point two, just shy of or shy of uh, Brisbane's one nineteen. So percentage will play a part. You reckon at some stage close to the end of the yeah, season, Brisbane are firing too. Uh, St Kilda defeat West Coast by seventy two points at Marvel Stadium. One of the more ugly performances by the West Coast League all year. Did we do this together to get this game? No. Oh, it was Jacko. Yeah. He was pretty scathing. Uh, you came in after us and uh, I... Uh, they were 19 points down at half time and look, they weren't playing great footy nor was St Kilda but it was the fall away that just was really stark what they, they dished up after half time. I think it was 10 goals to, to two. Skeeter. They were terrible. How... Sorry, I just need a stat to make this point. How no tackles inside fifty? How is the he has it twenty three to zero tackles inside fifty? That's extraordinary. How's that possible? How did that happen? I haven't heard that stat before ever. Zero. I I do remember there was a game against Hawthorne. I think you'll you'll back me up here. I think it was seventeen to zero marks inside fifty at one point in the game. Which if you're moving the ball well, but um, no marks inside your fifty up until the last quarter is strange as well. But that tackling one's even more. Really? Yeah, because t- tackling and uh, tackling around the ground, um, people use it as like an like an effort metric, really. So they got done in tackles, forty four to sixty five. Um, St Kilda had twenty three inside their own fifty. So there's the twenty differential. That's Ross Lyon, yeah. Go on. Um, oh, th- that's that's an indictment on um, the group, really. Like mm. that is that's as bad as it gets. So. Yeah, can you put that down to a young group away from home? Or I, I wouldn't have thought so. No, no. And look, yeah, Waterman, McGovern, <laughs> Yo, amongst those missing experienced players. So it was always going to be a difficult task. But there's some players that, you know, you obviously can't flick the whole squad, but there's going to be some players pretty anxious about their footy future in the next month or so, and that's not going to be great for them. I mean, Jaden Hunt was probably one of their better players. Tim Kelly's trying hard. If you get a chance, <laughs> I was calling with Carl Langdon. Oh, yeah, see, one of the great bloopers of all time. But uh... He replaced Jaden's last name with another letter. <laughs> all right? So he was calling about, was it Corridor Chasers? Oh, uh, yeah, something like that. Anyway. Think about uh, what Corridor and Chasers start with and put that in front of Jaden Hunt's last name, and that's what he called him. It was and it said, bloody so, brilliant on live radio. Yeah, he said that. And you... You, which I heard this live, you giggled away <laughs> like you're doing now. Instead of turning your mic off, no. you were just like that. That what's that dog off the racing show? That like the <laughs> like 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 um yeah the mut, like Muttley. You you were genuinely all I could hear was you wheezing away in the background, and you couldn't breathe. You you sound like you're crying. It was, I was I was crying. It was fun. tears was of funny. and and. Brad Hardy chipped in and Jacko. We just couldn't speak. <laughs> Carl didn't know what he'd said. He didn't realise he'd said that word. No. He didn't. Oh, and then, then when we replayed it, it wasn't just, you know, when you make a mistake, it, it, like sometimes words get mu- muddled up. He said it, that word clearly, that caught. <laughs> that word caught. <laughs> it was a CC moment. <laughs> anyway, uh, Eagles were uh, Eagles were <laughs> part of uh, – that was about the highlight for us, the uh, – a bit of humour because the rest of it was poor. So was, you said you said West Coast. Uh, you don't th- you don't think they can? Can they not win another game for us? Well, well you'd be surprised uh, if they did. Well, put it this Fremantle, way: Fremantle, they're not. They cannot beat Fremantle. <laughs> they can, and if Freo, if you lose, that like, I agree with you. No, they can't lose. Gold moment. Coast at home on a Friday night. They shouldn't be, but they could be. Could that be Gold Coast first win away from home? If Gold Coast lose to West Coast here on a Friday night, just pack pack Gold Coast up and yeah. just done. Yeah. You can't even move to Tassie anymore. Well, maybe you can. Maybe they say, no junior development. We're moving the entire squad down to Tasmania. Because if you can't play away from home and beat West Coast. And then they've got, well, they've got North Melbourne. Yeah, that's away. And, and Carlton. Yeah. North Melbourne's playing a lot better footy than the Eagles. Oh, let's be honest. Absolutely they are. Yeah, um, and look, as it stands, the Eagles get picked three in the draft, I think. And uh, they could have picked two because... Well, At the moment they do, yeah. yeah. Like they, they they're, could, not, they're not getting above... Thir- uh, uh, 16th, are they? So it's either going to be 16th, 17th, or potentially 18th. They'll, they'll be hoping for one. They'll, they'll, they'll be hoping to not win. But seriously, you'd be hoping to get another number one draft pick if you're West Coast. Uh, that'd be about as good as you can take out of it, which, uh, tell you what, that's about as uh, big a fall from grace as you'll ever see the last three seasons from the West Coast Eagles. Ah, horrendous. Uh, we spoke to 
uh, Oscar Allen after the yeah, game. Yeah, he did. I and, thought that was a good interview. Yeah, and people criticised him coming out with some sort of political, diplomatic answers. But I mean, what's a. I thought he answered the questions as, as honestly and as forthright as he could. <laughs> just, anyone who, you. just anyone who missed that. Jacko said, I've known you for a long time. But I want to put it on you that some of your players don't try. Basically, they right? yeah, don't care. Not, yeah. not very bad. They don't care, and they're not trying hard enough. That's that like verb. That's not verbatim. Mm. That's a sort of. And Oscar, pretty much agreed and said, if you don't care enough in football, like you get found out very quickly. Like, isn't that the what's he what's he want him to do? What what do people want him to do? Start naming and shaming him his own players. He's a captain. No, no. I, he, I you know, but people, you know, anything that a player says after the back of a seventy point loss, people are going to. Uh, picked to pieces. I thought Oscar Allen. You know, he put his head up and he gave he, honest answers to my to my think, lot of thinking. Uh, they were just terrible. Adelaide defeat Essendon by two points. Talking about terrible, the Essendon Football Club. Jesus, oh. bombers are cooked. How do they look? You know, I, I will ask. How do they lose it? But I was watching this one right with a bunch bunch of my Aquinas lads and we're sitting around watching. And we made the call like about five minutes in the last quarter. There's no way Adelaide don't win this, and there's no way Essendon. Don't lose this. Why? Just because it was Essendon. Mate. You could just the right. You know these games. Just writings yeah. on the wall. You can just see. You know Draper's kicking points, hitting the post, and from there's 10 blokes out. kicking it on the full from ten meters out, and they're just having a little giggle. And uh, mate, uh, you could just see it. You could just see it. And if you're an Essendon fan listening, uh, like I reckon you agree with me. Essendon fans. I was with an Essendon fan, and he said the same thing. He said, "Mate, I I know we're going to lose this. I don't know how." But we're going to find a way to lose so this. So do I, because I had them 1-39. to 39, <laughs> And the weak, spineless bunch of individuals oh. cough up a three-goal lead with six minutes to go. I'm sitting there at home. My wife's out at dinner or somewhere. I don't know where she was. And I'm sitting there and going, are you serious? Are you serious? You Anyway, no, that was um, well done to Adelaide. Congratulations to them. Joshua Shelley kicks, kicks the match winner. Ben Keyes kicks a handful of goals. Keyes, he was yeah. good. It's like a bit of one-day footy, wasn't it? 34 goals in the game. Um, and the Bombers, well, I mean, what are they? They just butchered chances late as well. So, no, that was, uh, that was well, put it this way. Fremantle supporters absolutely jumping for joy. That a lot of lot of clubs in that top eight saying, "There, yeah, that's a great result for them." So, oh, Essendon's not playing finals. No, not the way like we saw them last week together against uh, Melbourne. Yep, Melbourne beat them, and we mm. just saw what Melbourne were against Fremantle. Mm. So Essendon aren't playing finals. So they're one of the sides coming out of the eight for the Western Bulldogs and for Hawthorne because those two sides will be playing finals. Uh, Essendon. Tredful, uh, Fogarty kicked four. As you mentioned, Ben Keys kicked five. Big day. Josh Rochelle with the with the match winner. I liked his game as well. And only thing for Adelaide, they lost a couple of their key defenders on the night with um, Murray. Nick Murray with a knee. Who spoke about it after the game said it might have been all right. And Jordan Butts as well. So they and did that without their key defenders and out there. Jordan Dawson also suffered concussion, so he'll be missed against uh, Hawthorne next week. Happy with no suspension on that one. Yep. So am I. Uh, GWS defeat Gold Coast in the expansion cup. Uh, Gold Coast absolutely listless away from home. And you can put this in the Essendon basket. Pathetic Gold Coast. They are just absolutely another team. They are, um, uh, you know, they, they're just, they're, they look weak. Their contested game's not there. Their run and chase and tackle's not there. They are a, they're a shadow of, of what they are at home, which, which, to this point in the season, not being able to travel away once and challenge anyone. It's not like they've been close. They go away from home and you just go, oh, we'll see you next week, Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah they, they, the, the bluff and bravado of what they do on the, on the Gold Coast we saw against Port Adelaide with their, you know, they get physical and, you know, that, that's that's where they draw criticism. Look, they kick 6-14 as well, more scoring shots than the Giants. But they, they were, again, it, it was just the same... Record on repeat, unfortunately, for them. And um, the Giants, let's just take a positive spin here. The Giants are finding themselves in a pretty sweet spot here. Fifth position, a bit like Brisbane. Thought they were in a world of pain, but they've found a way to really uh, give themselves a chance now. And if they can get a, a list back together, you know, Cornelio missed on the weekend with that, that thing at shoulder. They have got a lot of upside. They've so, got a difficult run home mm, the last five. True. Melbourne away. Um, they should be beating Melbourne. Yeah, they should be, but they'll get Max Gorn back, so they'll be a better side. Hawthorne at home, huge, huge game for both of those sides. Uh, Brisbane at the Gabba, Frio here, Bulldogs away. That's about as tough of a run home as anyone has in the top eight, I reckon, Skeeter. Um, Collingwood's got a pretty big one too, but they are not in the top eight. GWS will have to play some good footy to, to, to finish top four, like really good footy, and 
that's probably a good thing because if you're going to finish top four, you don't want to just roll in there. Um, By the way, that uh, game against Fremantle is away for Fremantle, so it's a home game for the Giants. So not, yeah. I mean, it's only a small one, but, Sorry. but uh, you're right. No, they, they've got a tough run, you're right. But I wouldn't discount them from pushing for the top four, although it's hard to see, hard to see who they're going to displace. That's the issue. Yeah, Carlton maybe because they weren't too good against Kangaroos yesterday. Hawthorne defeat Collingwood by 66 at the MCG. We both tipped this one. Did we? Oh, well, I tipped oh, Hawthorne. I definitely did. I know, I did. Hawthorne, I just, yeah, absolutely. You would have. No, I tipped Hawthorne. I went okay, okay. don't worry. I okay. picked seven out of nine. You um, did, and but no Ruffy. No well, Ruffy of the week for well, you. Well, I didn't, you know, I had one to 39 for the S and they got rolled. I think I had one for 39 for St Kilda and they um, absolutely spanked the Eagles. Jack Ginnivan's a storyline here, isn't he? How good. Yeah. Do we like this? Yeah, I reckon we love this. Yeah. So I saw this blowing up on social media over the weekend. Um, Jack Inman giving it to the crowd and stuff, and and Collingwood fans crying like you yeah, wouldn't believe, like having the biggest sook of all time. And then I saw some some mirrored posts where he was doing the same thing in Collingwood colours, and you bloody love you loved every bit of it, Collingwood. So sucked in, you got rid of him, you chose to get rid of him, and he just stuck it right up you. He just said, he's 31 of the best and two goals and we'll beat you by 10, 11 goals. They smashed them. Absolutely uh, just pulled their pants down, Collingwood. And, uh, they, and they, good result for Fremantle as well, by the way, because their draft hand's getting stronger and stronger with <laughs> ah, this, right. with this the Collingwood Schultz demise. Trade. Absolutely. The Lockie Schultz trade, I'm not going to... They say Lockie's not going to be a good player long term for them, but at this point, it's worked out pretty well for for Fremantle and for for Hawthorne. Mm. And you know, he, he probably gets the three Brownlow votes. I would have thought uh, Jack on the weekend. James Sisley was very good yeah. behind the footy thirty disposals he had. He just you couldn't. He was like a brick wall. He couldn't get you, past. You him. almost think that they have to opposition clubs. It is with Sicily have to do what teams have done with Tom Stewart. Just yep. find a way, McGovern, probably. yeah, yeah, find a way to just nullify him somehow because. With him in the side, they look completely different. The thing about James Sicily, when at his best, um, and, and to be honest, the thing about Tom Stewart and the thing about Jeremy McGovern, I think that teams and people, not teams, I think people think, well, they can't defend. They're all good defenders. I, I don't know how you how you think about those guys. I played with Gov, a one-on-one defender. He didn't use to lose many one-on-one contests. If you think about Tom Stewart, he can defend very well. So... That's why it's difficult to go and get someone to go and play on them because they'll just beat them, beat them right? <laughs> so yeah, you almost need to try, if possible, to get your very best forward on them, right? You need to go and get – I know Sydney used to try and get like Buddy on Gov, right? Try and get Buddy – you know, and then, then you're really good to defend and you've got your very best forward on them too. So you nullify the intercepting because it's very difficult to drop off. But uh, he's not even turned into. He is an absolute gun. Uh, four goals to Luke Bruce, who I believe broke the record for the highest number of games played by a rookie ever in uh, in the history of rookie uh, rookies playing the game, which is pretty bloody good. They're an amazing team, Hawthorne, what they've done after a 0-5 and five start. And again, they're the feel-good story of the season, but they're 11th. They might not play finals. So Riley <laughs> tells me, our man, uh, who'd be a bit miserable after Geelong's performance, I've got to be honest. Uh, I know he listens now, so sucked in, Riley. Uh, they've got to win four of the last five, he thinks, to play finals. So they've got to win against Adelaide away, GWS away, Carlton away, Richmond and North Melbourne. Richmond and North Melbourne, done. Tick, tick. Adelaide, I would. I think gonna, they can win. I'm going to say tick. So he thinks they're going to beat either Carlton or GWS away from home. What do you say, away from home? Carlton away. Yeah, uh, MCG. G- probably. GWS is away, a proper away. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's beyond them. No, it's, absolutely not. It's, it's not just the the footy they're playing. It's the the way they express themselves, which yep. you know sounds very arty farty, but it's actually they are having fun. They're, they're playing for each other. They love each other's company. Sam Mitchell. It just it looks like a team that's so united. So let's just <coughs> just uh, pinpoint this, Jaden, just in case it happens. If Hawthorne go on and start losing games for the rest of the year, and they continue to play with the same bravado and and celebrations, and I'd almost say carry on. I'm a bit old school, but they're losing. People will hate it. I listen to the radio now. I see it on socials. How good is Hawthorne? We love watching Hawthorne play. Oh, he love the celebrations. We talk about Jack Ginnivan. Give me it. How good's that? When you win, people love it. When you lose, people will be saying, they're ahead of themselves. How dare they carry on? But just so we know, as we've got a mark here in the season, this is how they are, 
right? So just just wait. If they start losing, you'll see it, you'll see it happen, Skeeter. People will start saying, oh, they, they they got too far ahead of themselves. Taking selfies out in the they're, middle of the MCG. They've been doing that all year. I know, I right? know. Other so clubs are doing this well. Just, I mean, the doctors did it. Correct. The SCG. Correct. So just so we know that that's how they are. So no one cracked the shits when they, they may not make finals. But I, I, I love them. Even if they My don't Hawks. make the finals, My Hawks. it's, you know, as they say in racing, that's a black booker. That's one you put in for, for next season. And it, that, you know, the problem is it doesn't get any easier. Like, because you've had this season they've had now, yeah. it doesn't guarantee no. 6X next year. But no. what we do see is that Sam Mitchell, I think, is putting the, the, the bricks in place to make sure that there's a good foundation for this club. And they'll go, they'll, they're still trying to cherry pick some some talent from around the competition. They'll Josh Battle, et cetera, to help out Sicily. So they're. they're Mitch Lewis is not going to be there for obviously the best part of twelve months, Jeez. but no, nah, good to watch. Magpies are cooked, uh, and can't make can't play finals. Uh, well, they're cooked in terms of winning the premiership. I think that's a, that's no. a given, isn't it? I don't think they can play finals, mate. No, they're they're in all sorts. They've got Richmond, who they'll beat this Sunday, you'd think, um, <laughs> which is worrying because we're not just saying the let's. Well, you think they would, but yes. yeah, no, they 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 the defeat on the weekend was an absolute indication of. They're two games out of the eight. And, but they've also, it's their style, they've just fallen off the cliff in the past month. Yep. Uh, Western Bulldogs uh, defeat Geelong by 47 at uh, down at the Cattery. I'm just going to start with this. Rory Lobb is the new best <laughs> defender in the world. Um, I've seen no other defender to play like him, and he gave birth to Jeremy Cameron over the weekend. One he, goal. He was... <laughs> I. Certainly wasn't on my bingo card to start the year. Rory Lobb, gun defender. I never thought he'd be able to do it, but he was outstanding. He had 14 intercept possession, nine marks. Six of those marks were uh, intercept marks, and he played on Jeremy Cameron, who we'd have him in the top five forwards in the league, right, uh, in terms of dangerous players. Now, a, a lot of forward craft is how your midfield goes, and, and the Bulldogs absolutely touched him up. But Rory Lobb, tell you what, I love you. Seriously? No, it was very nice. Uh, very smaltzy. Uh, Adam Trelaw, uh, I think missed last game with uh, an injury, a late withdrawal. Mm. He was terrific. Kicked three uh, close to best on. Jamari Eagle Hagen with four. I'm going to just quickly throw this at you. If you've got the choice between, uh, I think it's Jamara. David Mundy threw this at me yesterday. Jamari Eagle Hagen, Sam Darcy, Josh Tracy, and the King Boys. Who are you taking right now? Uh to play, to play next what, to, to play, play next week, just yeah. in my team, right? Yeah. Um, I probably not the. I I always like someone with a bit of you know shit about you, so I don't know if the King Boys have that. So see you later. Um, I think Jamara might have that. Who was the third? It was Tracy and one Sa- other. Sam Darcy. I, I Sam think he's Darcy. Long term, he's been very good. Correct. So not Sam Darcy. So yeah. for mine between Tracy and Jamar Hugo Hagen. Jeez, you'd like them both. I'm going to take Josh Tracy because I think he's got a bit of uh, Jaden Hunt in him, right? I reckon he's got a little bit of Jaden Hunt in him. And, uh, yeah, I, I'd take him into a bullfight. I reckon he'd beat the bull up and we'd be good to go. Cats have been impenetrable at home for many years, but the last 18 months, I, I think they've lost more matches than I can remember at for home. a long time, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. It was played in a genuine <laughs> mud pit. Didn't they do an $8 million upgrade? That was just the grandstand, was it? So they played a VFL game before a, 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 uh, an opener, like an hour before the game, and it was it was like an absolute mud pit. It was disgusting. Old-fashioned footy was good. Yeah, it was disgraceful, actually. Ah, uh, yeah, Bulldogs, too good. Geelong, not sure where they're at. And They're sixth. Yeah, but in, in no, life. No, you're right. No, in, in life. life yeah, you know, I agree with you. I was just being smart. Yeah, I know. I, I, don't worry. I fucking know. <laughs> what? I, I don't know. Where, where are they at? Oh, the, yeah, the, isn't it funny? They go through – they're a club that goes through the, through the great start, fall off a cliff, have a resurgence, and they look like they're about to – Go through another bit of a, a tough patch, and they've got as their next game North Melbourne at Bloodstone Arena, which is no absolute gimme. Port Adelaide defeat Richmond by 41. Uh, Adelaide over. Won't spend long on this one. Connor Rose got a hip knock. He was uh, my fantasy captain and cost mm. me the weekend, so thanks, Connor. He'll be right for next week, though. Charlie Dixon kicked four goals. Uh, Tigers sort of hung around for most of this game, but uh, Port too good. Uh, Toby Dan Curvis was subbed out with a concussion as well. Yeah, uh, good to see Charlie back. Kicking some goals. I'm, I'm still not sold on Port, I've got to be honest. I'm not sure why. I mean, they did what they had to do. They led by eight at half time, and um, no real stress for them. But, yeah, they, they're they seventh at the moment, and we know that, you know, that could change next week if they can um, have an away win against uh, Carlton. That's that's going to be pretty defining to see what they come up with at Marvel Stadium. They're in the – this is the group of random teams that could literally do anything any given weekend. Geelong – 
Port Adelaide, Essendon, Melbourne, maybe even Gold Coast. Like they rock up and you could they could beat a side by eight goals and they could easily get done by ten goals. Yeah, the same exactly the same team. Yeah, Port Adelaide just a bit too flaky. Look, but on the weekend uh, conditions. Uh, you know they've got the they've got the tool. I'm still concerned about them defensively for what it's worth. Even though they went out and got you know the Radicalia and yes. got Aaliyah early, I just I'm not sold about Port. And look, they might sneak into the eight, but I'm not convinced they can do that much damage. Brisbane defeat Sydney by two at the Gabba game of the weekend. This one, uh, it was an absolute. Uh, it was a bit of a slog for what what um, I guess we're used to at the Gabba. Um, like 72, scoring, yeah. 74. Not really high possession, but it was a great game uh, to watch. I watched most of this one before I headed off to the footy with my kids. Um, yeah, it was a it was a back and forth battle, wasn't it? It was sort of like a couple of heavyweights going head to head, and then um, five lead changes in the last quarter, which made it a really good watch. Yeah, Brisbane started so well, kicking five goals to one, but then after that, it was the Swans with eight goals to two. So they really had the game on their terms for a long while. I guess what didn't help their cause, the Swans, uh, the injuries to Papley and Rampy, that mm. was significant uh, in the, the overall scheme of things. But the last quarter, yeah, you're right, it's so, so much drama. And these are two sides that, well, don't put it beyond to see them playing uh, very, very deep in September. But, uh, yeah, in the end, Joey Danaher stood up with three goals. Cam Rayner, I thought, was uh, terrific. Brisbane's won seven in a row. They are f- Sizzling, yeah. They, but some of the teams they've beaten haven't been of huge quality. But what we know is momentum and and winning games of footy. It always came. I remember I was driving back from down south about two months ago, and Chris Fagan. I think they'd beaten. Might have been the Bulldogs on a Friday night. He said, "Look, you know what? We just have to roll the dice from here on in play attacking footy." So that they to me look like. Your old club, mm. as in who you buried for, Geelong of the nineteen nineties under Malcolm Blight, Hawthorne, where they yeah, yeah I know. but Geelong of the nineteen nineties, just. Yesterday wasn't the case where they kick a big score, but they have decided to really yeah. express themselves and try and play attacking footy. And well, as it stands, it's working. Their midfield's playing well. Yeah. Um, and like, yesterday wasn't that though. Like the two, they were close to the two best midfields in the comp. These two, like Neil McCluggage, uh, Dunkley, V Heaney, Warner, mm. um, Goulden. None of them really shot the lights out on the day. Do you know what I mean? Like um, Zorko was one of the best players, but Goulden had 27. We've seen him have 40. Um, and Taylor Adams tagged Lockie Neal. So it was sort of a bit of a null and void in the midfield. So good battle, great job. You could see him playing again in finals. Sydney, for what it's worth, have lost three games in the past month by a combined accumulative margin of five points. Bullshit. Yeah. So they're two games <laughs> clear on top as it is. Uh, they're, they're going to finish on top, you suspect, still. But gee, they've they've uh, they've been stung a couple of times in close games. Carlton North Melbourne, uh, Carlton by nineteen. My you 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 treated me like I, I tell you what, I was disappointed with how you treated me on Thursday, Skeeter. After I told you North Melbourne could beat Carlton, like you treated me with absolute disdain, and North could have won this one. So what was the final score? <laughs> I don't know what the points. score was. It was. Carlton got the four points. Yeah, you, North, North you would North have been a little bit shaky in your boots, nah, I reckon. Nah, Carl, no, no, honestly, if 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 I, you'd tell me they were going to get within five goals, I would have said, "Yep, the Carlton's not playing great footy." We know that right. they're not. But I, you know, North Melbourne probably just lacked that quality uh, yesterday. Interesting. I just want your opinion on Harry Mackay on him going down, looking like he was concussed. Not being, yeah. There's some question marks about Carlton where they handled his uh, head knock. Well, it's not on. It's not necessarily on or Harry Mackay. Just no, so, no. yeah. Just so, just so we know, like this isn't a Harry Mackay because he's issue. a player, right? And he's gonna want to stay on the field. That is why we need an independent doctor. How he he gets knocked out. He hits his head on the ground. He stays on the ground. His own teammate picks him up and is holding him up. Right. So. Regardless of whether he's good or not, you need to get him off the ground. Yeah. He stays on the ground. He kicks a goal, right? He kicks a goal for Carlton, an important goal. And then, I don't know, close to 10 minutes later, Carlton comes trotting onto the field and get him off. He got asked to get off three times, didn't come off, and in that space kicked a goal. Laura Kane wants to trot out. What's some of her quotes That's here? why Carlton need to please explain as to how this played out and what was the reason and the rationale anyway. It's it's fascinating because I know that you think Port Adelaide would have been keen for him to go off and be assessed if, for this week. If the AFL are saying that they they won't apologise for looking after health and safety, get some independent doctors at games because that's not good enough. 
Carlton should be fine for that. Yeah. Anyway, Kerno kicked four. He's got 53 for the season. He leads Jesse Hogan by four in the Coleman medal race. Uh, yeah, it wasn't their, their most polished performance, I don't think, Carlton, but they get across the line. Again, um, Paddy Cripps was terrific. Probably picks up a Brownlow vote or two. But they're second, but they're, they're very beatable. I've said that after I saw Fremantle play them in Adelaide, I still think there's some there's some holes that other teams can exploit down the track. Um, little shout out to Griffin Logue, who I thought did a very good job on Charlie Kerno. First game back, kicked three goals in the uh, in the third or last, whatever I was watching. But they were one was a rundown tackle on Kobe Mitkircher, another was a free kick that wasn't really there. So I thought it was good, which meant Charlie Combin uh, went forward, looked pretty good, kicked three goals. So uh, Kangaroos continue to improve their list. Uh, yeah, this is Laura Kane on the AFL. We've got a job to do around player health and safety. That's something we won't apologise for or back away from, and it's something we really care about. If you care enough, you'd be putting independent doctors because there's too often we're seeing that if we're making the head the priority. Will Schofield, Mark Rennings, Shelter Footy Cast. Skater, before we let you go, we know you're a very busy man. Um, you know, tell us all the time, um, employed by more people than me, which... Uh, <laughs> Which is a, you know, we're doing well, both of us. <laughs> Just uh, to stay away. Shout out on the Shelter Footy Cast. Skeeter, we've got to get what we frothed on. Oh. Froth Town, August 23, 24. <clears throat> get your tickets at froth.town. Uh, we're going to have plenty of giveaways in the month of August for this one. But of course, for Froth Town, we're doing what we frothed on on the weekend. And Skeeter, you're not going to steal my thunder. Oh, I'm really? taking this one. Oh. I've already mentioned him, mate. Rory fucking Lobb. Okay. Rory Lobb. To turn himself into a, I don't want to say this. I'm not going to say it. I was going to say the M word. Uh, an average forward who played a great year for Fremantle in his in his decisive year, which then got him traded to the Bulldogs. To turn himself from what he's been as a player into what I saw on the weekend against one of the best forwards in the competition. I absolutely bow to you, Rory Lobb. Congratulations. Here's your Backman badge that I, I never thought I'd be able to give to you. Backman badge to you, Rory Lobb. I frothed his game. He was outstanding. Yeah, no, it uh, feels like those words were hard to uh, speak for you <laughs> after the after the absolute bollocking you've given him over the years. Well, because well, he's a forward. Yeah, I know, but he's a backman now, yes. so he's one of you. So you, better, you two can get on TikTok together and do your stuff. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to speak of TikTok, this young bloke. I know we've spoken about him, but there's no question. He's a froth, frothing moment of the weekend. Who? Who? Uh, Jack Ginnivan at Hawthorne. He's the man that just... Lit it up, and he's talking on the. He dropped the f bomb on uh, Fox as well, <laughs> and then he's with Cam Mooney, and he's telling Collingwood supporters go to sleep. Did he? He got got uh, he got uh, elbowed in the throat by uh, Maynard, his premiership teammate, and Maynard gets a fine. Uh, nah, uh, he's got spunk about him. He can play footy. He annoy the hell out of you if you're an opposition player. But now nah, he's a frothing moment for me at the weekend. Okay, very good. Uh, make sure you get your tickets for Froth Town at froth.town. There's going to be beers, shelter tent. Skeeter will be there having a 1,000 beers. I'm sure he will. Uh, questions and comments from our audience, Skeeter. De Dean Havlin on Instagram says, Skeeter and Scoey, what is going on at the moment with holding the ball? A player will get pinned all but the ball-carrying arm immediately and get called holding the ball. Meanwhile, a player can have a second try, break a tackle, but because of the ball at some point gets pinned, they call ball up. It looks ridiculous. I don't believe just because the ball is free, you can get rid of the ball. And just because it eventually got pinned, you didn't have the opportunity to get rid of it. I'll take this one, Skeet. I think it's actually being adjudicated pretty well holding the ball. Um, I like how quick they're calling it when it gets pinned. And I, the ball up. Yep. I like the if the ball's free and you don't do anything with it holding the ball, you can... Um, Dino, you can drop it and kick it, or at least try to. Um, if the ball's free, there's an ability to kick the footy. So... I'll come against you and say I think it's looking good. I, I like how the holding ball. I like all the changes they made to it. I think what you're going to find also, and it's going to continue because we've got four umpires. You've got four different umpires, four different interpretations in terms of their angles and what they see. So we're never going to, ha never going to have the the consistency that we'd like, just because if you and I are watching a game of footy, yes. we disagree on certain decisions, and I think that's just the way it lands. But I, I agree with you. I think it's probably hopefully subsided because I don't want to keep talking umpires for the rest of this year. It, it needs to be about what is arguably one of the best uh, home and away seasons. Jesse Budge has a suggestion on YouTube, our last one on the show, Skeeter. Is it time for a live golf situation uh, where we can get our great game back from the uh, brainless idiots running the show now. So, is, is that a is that a different tournament? Is that everyone just get on the piss and start throwing beer on the field? I'm not sure what parts of live golf 
that they want. But not like World Series cricket. Surely we want to break away, uh, break away league. Well, Surely we, we not. know that fans aren't overly happy with what's happening in the game at the moment. So maybe Jesse's just. There sort are of arguments about which is fair enough. Gambling and, and drugs from the players is, is part of it. They've got their two thirty or twelve thirty grand final start. I don't know. Are they that unhappy? Are the, are the crowd numbers down that significantly? Probably not. No. It's I mean, still fun going. We always like to whinge and bitch and moan. No, the game, some matches are crap, some matches are good. We've done a lot of crap once, haven't we, when we're calling um, you know, footy at oh, times. Yeah. But, but, you know, the, the good ones are still very good. And, you know, as I said, the, the AFL, they would love the fact that there's still, what, 11 or 12 teams yes. in contention to play finals, uh, which a question for another time, will bring the wild card suggestion to the fore again at some stage. It's already been mentioned. Derby coming up this weekend. Make sure you go to backchatstudios.com.au. Get your tickets for the Derby show down at the Leadable Hotel. There's going to be shelters flowing down there. We found another uh, tap of Backchat Ales, so they're going to be on tap, uh, Keg, I mean. Um, you've got to get down there, Skeeter. It's going to be bloody brilliant. No, I look forward to it. If uh, you and M- Mundy are there, Barra's, uh, <laughs> Barra's going to add some sense to your uh, chaos. That's correct. <laughs>